Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So the day has finally come. Mama, I made it. A trans has finally dedicated an entire video to me. I feel so honored. A whole video just to call me a man. Love to see it. This trans really doesn't make like a single argument, so it's just gonna be fun to watch, to be honest. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday here on my channel, so if you guys are not yet subscribed, make sure that you do that right now. Go ahead, I'll wait for you. I feel like it's not as powerful when I don't have nails. Are you done? Thank you very much. And also shout out to you if you're already subscribed. I see you, y'all are the best, love you. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to keep as up to date with me as possible. And also I have a Patreon, so if you guys would like to donate to this channel, the link for that is down below as well. But yeah, with no further ado, let's get right into my very first fan video. We're gonna get right into it. This video is long, honey. She's 16 minutes of me being a man, so brace yourself. <laughs> My name's Vanessa Voki. I'm a photographer, an artist, and a sewist from Canada. And today I'm going to be making a video reacting to Samantha Lux. He made a couple different videos about bottom surgery. So I'm going to be kind of going over his assumptions and his uh, experience of bottom surgery and some of the facts. Okay, all right, here we go. First of all, this bitch is a sewist and a photographer. We love sewists, we love photographers, but don't try to come at me and tell me that you know better than me, somebody who's actually gone through the surgery, somebody who has first-hand experience, that you know better than I do what bottom surgery is like. Also, when I was scripting out this video, my mom came in and I showed her the person that made this video. And she was like, this bitch is a photographer with that clashing background, with that shirt, she's a sewist. My mom's a real woman too, she birthed me. All right, the transphobe misgenders me within 30 seconds and continues to do so throughout the entire video. But anyways, before we even get into any of the arguments that this person makes, the whole video is based off the assumption that I think that my bottom surgery makes me a woman. I don't think I've ever said that my bottom surgery makes me a woman and you know, even if I did, I'll just clarify it for you guys right now. I don't think any of the surgeries that I've had make me a woman. I was just as much of a woman before I had surgery as I am now. So the whole video is already a fail. For me, I had, you know, full depth vaginoplasty. So first off, the more accurate term to describe this surgery wouldn't be a vaginoplasty, it would be a penile inversion. There is no vagina involved in this surgery. The surgery involves taking a penis and inverting it to resemble something sort of tangentially related to what a woman's vagina looks like. Okay, period. So you said it yourself. Actually, vaginoplasty is not the correct term. Yes, it is. I don't know what this has to do with me, what this has to do with my trans identity. Like, you're really gonna argue with me about like vaginoplasty? She's like, well, technically there's no vagina involved. It just involves taking a penis and turning it into a vagina. You just said it. They'd be like, well, it's not a real vagina. I really wonder if they would tell a cis woman who had like reconstruction done due to like trauma or something, or even a cis man that had reconstruction down there due to trauma. Like like for female to male bottom surgery, I'm pretty sure it was originated for cisgender men who like had their parts blown off in war or something like that. I really wonder if this trans would say to that cis woman who experienced trauma or that cis man war veteran, I wonder if she would tell them that their genitalia wasn't real or that it made them less of a man or less of a woman. On the second day, they get you up, they get you moving around and they start to build up your, your strength again. They start to get it so that you are able to walk around again. This is a major, major surgery. And to electively decide to invert your penis when there's no medical reason to do so, he just admitted that he was bedridden for a week. I did not say that I was bedridden for a week. In the clip that she literally included, I said that they got me up walking around within two days. But all of that isn't even relevant because this surgery was medically necessary. And that's not according to just only me, but also the numerous medical professionals that, you know, assessed me before surgery and said that the surgery was medically necessary. And again, you're a photographer. Who the fuck are you to tell me what surgery is medically necessary for me? Go work on your bad photography. Some of the immediate risks of getting this type of surgery are bleeding, infection, skin or clitoral necrosis. That means when the skin dies and turns black and falls off. We know. Suture line dehiscence, more on that later. Been there. Urinary retention or vaginal prolapse. Fistulas from the rectum, urethra or bladder usually present early on. A study done on transgender women's vagina, vagina. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> uh, found that vaginal discharge and odor in transgender women is unlikely due to common causes in non-transgender women, which is so annoying. Like we're not non-transgender women, we're biological women, we're normal women, we're real women. <laughs> like 
Why do we need to have a, a secondary descriptor? And it's absurd. Okay, first of all, does this bitch not know how the English language works? Putting non in front of something isn't creating a new word or anything like that. It's just saying that that's not something that you are. Like I've heard transphobes argue that they don't like the term cis women because you know, they're just women. They're not actually cis, but I've never heard somebody go as far to say that they don't like the term non-transgender. She's real hurt. I think a trans girl stole her man or something. She's real upset. Also, did you catch that part where she said trans girl's vagina? I thought they didn't have a vagina. I thought there was no vagina involved. Basically, in this part of the video, she just goes off and tries to list different reasons why, you know, a cis woman's vagina is different than a trans woman's vagina, which I don't disagree with. I never said that my vagina was this exact. I'm saying vagina so much, but I never said that it was the exact same as a cisgender woman's. Any sexual sensation or any sexual function when you decide to have this surgery. I moved a stitch or something happened. I don't know what happened, but something happened and I was in excruciating pain. You're not going to be losing any sexual pleasure or any sexual functions at all. Like I thought, did I make a mistake? Did I like that better? Like what's wrong with me? Why am I having these thoughts? Here she goes again though, piecing together random clips of different videos to try to make me seem like I'm contradicting myself, which I'm not. So she takes a part of one video where I'm talking about how you're not going to lose any sexual functions or sexual pleasure. And she puts it next to clips from a different video where I'm talking about my struggles with libido and like anxiety about like the whole area, whatever. But libido is not the same as the ability to feel sexual pleasure. They're just not the same. <laughs> is that it doesn't look real. That, you know, it just, you know, doesn't look real. That's... Well, it's not real. How could it look real? A vagina isn't an inverted penis. It's by definition not real. Do these trans-identified males not realize how absolutely insulting it is to infer that a vagina is just a penis inverted? The trans is like, do these trans activists not know how insulting it is to insinuate that my vagina is the same as an inverted penis? First of all, I never said that. That was all you that said it was an inverted penis. Second of all, you just said the same thing about trans women. Like, do transphobes know that they don't just like push really hard in a penis and like call it a day? They completely rearrange all the tissues down there and like put everything into the places that it, you know, normally would have grown into if I was born cisgender. Insert a little TikTok that kind of just shows how the tissues in males and females are actually all the same. They're just in like different shapes and like locations. For those asking, this is how the anatomy is similar. Same basic components, different distribution, different size. Did you know the female body has the same amount of erectile tissue as a male body? So when you have bottom surgery, all they're doing is taking those tissues that are in, you know, a more male shape and putting them into a more female shape. It sounds so stupid, but like, I, I don't want to be judged for something like that. This is from the World Health Organization's website. Female genital mutilation involves the partial or total removal of external female genitalia. Now on the flip side of that, we have labiaplasty rising in popularity in the West. She starts out again with clips of me and in those clips I'm talking about the anxiety that I felt and like the pressures that I felt But then after the clip she immediately starts talking about female genital mutilation and then goes into like labiaplasty and how porn is like making girls like want to have labiaplasty to get unrealistic results. Literally, what are you talking about? I agree that FGM is bad. The reasons that cisgender women want to get labiaplasties, yeah, they're probably a little bit messed up. They're probably a little bit influenced by some toxic standards. I completely agree. How does any of this mean I'm a man? Like, are you okay? So the version that I had done allows me to get there two different ways, the same ways that, you know, cisgender women would get there. Both of them work great. Oh, uh, how do I phrase this? Can I already tell you he doesn't understand? that women don't have prostates. Do I really need to explain to this cisgender ass bitch the two different ways that cisgender women reach orgasm? I mean, fair enough, you probably don't have much experience with like people going down there. Like I get that, I totally get it. I'm not gonna go into it because like bitch, Google it, like that's not my job. The two different ways that I was referring to are, you know, through penetration and through clitoral stimulation. I wasn't trying to talk about no anatomical structures inside the body. I wasn't trying to go that deep. Got bottom surgery, you won't be able to self lubricate the same way that a cisgender woman would. Not only are vaginas self-lubricating, they're also self-cleaning. <laughs> the easiest way to explain cervical fluid is to describe how it feels. We're not going to talk about this. This is just like a really sad, creepy, freakish attempt to invalidate my womanhood because of the different ways that our vaginas lubricate themselves. And also, so many cisgender women can't even self-lubricate at all. Are you going to attack their womanhood now? Or is it just because I'm trans that you're pointing this out and attacking my womanhood? I promise you that most sexual partners do not care about this whatsoever. I promise you. Of sensation or any type of ability to orgasm. 
A study of sexual desire in transgender women found that 83% never or rarely experience spontaneous sexual desire. A lot more difficult to like get there, if you know what I'm saying? Like, it sounds so weird to talk about, but it's the truth. The belief that after surgery, everything down there is going to feel extremely fake or extremely foreign to both you and your partner. But, but when you have this surgery, there's a lot of anxiety that comes afterwards. This is just like so funny to me. Like she really thinks that she like made some good points and shit. So she starts out with clips of me saying that you're not gonna lose any sexual function or you know any sexual pleasure when you have bottom surgery. That's great, checks out, good. But then she goes on to insert clips of me talking about the anxiety that I felt about sex post-op, unrelated struggles that I had with libido, and even cuts up a video of me quoting a myth to try to make it seem like I said, everything feels fake and foreign, and tries to use those few things to prove that, you know, I've lost sexual function. Not only all that, but then the transphobe also conflates sexual function and the ability to feel sexual pleasure with spontaneous sexual desire. Real smart cookie this one is, real smart. You can't get pregnant. You can't. Unless someday, you know, you have a uterus transplant and like all that kind of stuff. Maybe you can. Of course you can't get pregnant. You're a man. You're a male. You don't have the parts. And even if they could stitch the parts into you, your body would reject it. You're so lucky you never get periods. Like, what I would give to get periods, like what I would do to be able to, you know, house my own offspring in my body. That sounds so weird, but like what I would do to, give pre to get pregnant, girl. Like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, dude, we can tell. We know how jealous you are. It's pretty obvious. Uterus transplants are already a thing and you don't know how my body would react, Mr. Photographer. But the blatant transphobia and lack of empathy the transphobe has is appalling to say the least. So let me get this right. Because I'm trans, you get to mock my struggles with infertility. If you wanted kids and you couldn't, I guarantee you'd be upset too. And guess what? I wouldn't mock you for it because I'm not a fucking monster. Like you can't claim to be a feminist and then mock somebody because they can't have their own children. It looks totally like real. I've showed boys, I've showed girls. Both of them said that it looks totally natural, totally like cisgender you could say. If your friend were to get a really bad tattoo and were to come to you and say like, hey look guys, isn't this awesome? What are you supposed to say? Like, okay, fair. That's fair, fair enough. My friends might lie to me, you know what I mean? They don't wanna hurt my feelings. They don't wanna, you know, make me upset. So yeah, that's, that's a fair criticism to make. Girl, I promise you, people don't know. I'm not gonna talk about how I know that because it was a different time. But if I go to have sex with somebody and it rips open and I bleed out and die, I don't think that's gonna happen. But like, what if it does? I've never heard a woman laughing about having her now vagina ripped open from sex and bleeding out and dying. And a lot of stories about women having their hymen ripped when they were having sex and it's just not a laughing matter for us. Oh my God, who the fuck is laughing at girls' hymens being ripped? That's your best argument? That's your best argument. Regret your sexual reassignment surgery. That transitioning doesn't even help a person and that the suicide rates are still just as high after surgery as they are before surgery. We're like bawling my eyes out saying like, what did I do? Like, what did I do to myself? I fucked myself up. I'm never gonna heal from this. I don't know, like, how is this gonna be okay? Like, I'm gonna have a hole in my body for the rest of my life. Again, if these clips were not completely out of context, you would know that yes, after my bottom surgery, I felt scared. I was afraid that I was never gonna heal. And I did have some thoughts of regret. Having come out the other side and having healed fine and you know, like, I'm good now, I would absolutely do it again. I have no regrets at all. The percentage of people that regret having sexual reassignment surgery is so minuscule that it's not even like a relevant percentage of people. How dare he say that it's a minuscule and irrelevant number of people that are detransitioning? Way to gaslight an entire group of people who feel the medical community abused them, lied to them. Detrans Canada has yet to launch a concerted recruitment drive and has fewer than a dozen Canadian members. But Ava noted that a Reddit forum for detransitioners r slash dtrans grew from 3,000 to over 16,000 members in just a few months this year. How dare you say it's just a small percentage of people. Bitch, that's a fact. I don't have like the study up here. I'm gonna take a screenshot and I'm gonna insert it right here. It's a fact, okay? <laughs> and I think that this study is a little bit more accurate than the number of users on a subreddit platform. For all that being said, I do wanna make it clear that having bottom surgery is not like a, a one-stop fix for all of your problems. I feel like I might've treated my transition kind of like that for a long time. I thought in my head that, you know, once I get through my transition, once I get through this next surgery, once I get through this next procedure, then then I'll be happy, then I'll feel complete, then everything will be good. But that's really not true. A lot of studies have shown that we don't really reach psychological maturity. We're not able to conceptualize the consequences of certain actions that we make. 
until we get to about 25 years of age. I hope that he is one of the people who doesn't regret his surgeries. I hope he is one of those people that is happy. Not true saying that his inverted penis somehow makes him a woman and using women's spaces and pretending that he's a woman and all those other things are not okay. Thank you for your very authentic, genuine, you know, claims of hope that I don't regret my surgery. <laughs> Going on five years strong, still don't regret it. This transphobe goes on to say his inverted penis doesn't make him a woman. I never said that it did, but go off. You have to stop pretending that you're a woman and using women's spaces because it's not okay. I'm gonna use all the women's spaces that I want because I'm a woman. There's nothing you can do to stop me. It's okay for him to be a feminine man. It's okay for him to be a man who wanted his penis inverted. What that doesn't make him is a woman. This goes the same for Blair White and Rose of Dawn and, you know, some of the other popular YouTuber transsexual males. This bitch is attacking everybody, not even just the left ones. The transphobes like, being a feminine man is totally fine. Do you not remember the whole Harry Styles thing? You transphobes were sobbing for like a week. The end of this dude's video was all pictures of me before I transitioned, which like, I get it. You don't want the transsexual to look prettier than you in your own video, right? That's the end of his video, but in conclusion, usually I'd have like an argument formed at this point of the video, but like, they didn't make any solid arguments, so I'm just kind of sitting here like, okay, that was fun. <laughs> the transphobes video was based off of multiple false accusations, like the fact that I think that my surgery makes me a woman, or that I think that a trans woman's vagina is the exact same as a cisgender woman's. These are the freaks that the fear-mongering public figures like JK Rowling, these are the ones that they're motivating. Anyways, to end this video, get help, sir. Like, I, I don't know what else to say. If you guys like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up down below. Comment your favorite part of the video, the most ridiculous thing that this bitch said. I'll be looking at them, laughing at my favorites. And yeah, other than that, I think I'm going to go. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I will see you in Thursday's video. Bye guys.